My mum sitting me down and talking to me about what she wanted when she passed away allowed us to have a real in-depth conversation. The fact that she said like a lot of the things that she had been through in the UK felt like she was living in a box. She didn't want to be in a box when she then dies as well. So that's why she wanted to be cremated and scattered in her father's land. But I wish I'd had that conversation with my dad and I knew what he wanted. I just did the best that I thought I could. It's almost like going into a situation completely blindfolded. My dad had buried his brother here, so we buried my dad near his brother. So it kind of gave me some peace that he's been buried with his brother, but I don't actually know what my dad would have wanted. My dad had sickle cell all of his life, um, so he wasn't even expected to live as long as he did. I know that he was lucky to have lived that long. The last thing I was expecting was to be told that he was dead. It took for my dad to pass away unexpectedly, for my mum to sit us down. At this point I was 26, no 25. My mum sat me down and was like, you're ready to know that when I pass away, this is what I want. And this is how you should do this. And this is how you should do that. I remember that day thinking, my mom's so dramatic, like, okay, dad died, but you're not going anywhere. So why are we having this conversation now? And now when I think about it in hindsight, we should have even had that conversation earlier. Okay. Yeah, I'm cool. I'm cool. Yeah, nice to you. Well, good to see you. Okay. Is this your local, local florist? Yeah. Like, what's funny is before this, I never used to spend my money on flowers. <laughs> <laughs> I like this process because mm. I don't get to do this for my mom. Okay. I went through two very different processes. Mm. Like with this one, like, I get to go and see my dad, get to go talk to him. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. I have a space. Mm. Whereas with mum, like, she's yeah, there because she Scatter her in Nigeria. Oh, did she? Okay. Does it feel real yet? No, not at all. <laughs> How long has it been? Not at all. Um, two months. He basically said, it's up to you guys where, where I go, where, I, where you bury me. Um, he had told, had that convo with my mum. In preparation for what we're going to do, do, we had to make that decision ourselves. So, so my mum asked, myself and my, my siblings like what what do you think and obviously similar to you from a from a selfish standpoint you're just like well i want to be able to go to where so, he is yeah. easily um you know going to nigeria is expensive it's long, <laughs> it's, it's, long. long. it's expensive and uh whilst he's got a lot of family over there he's got family here yeah. even that decision wasn't a decision that we could only make we had to check call with home the elders. and check the elders, check with the elders, <laughs> See if speak okay to them about the decision, make sure that they're okay with it. And even that process is difficult because they're they're thinking, you know, bring my son back, back home. home. I think I think a lot of it. I don't know if it's the same for you, but I think there's this kind of stigma or myth or taboo or taboo, not only to speak about it and bring it into existence, but also that like unexplained reasons of death seems to revolve around either like the devil or something not being done well or evil spirits or you're not praying hard enough and I still feel like religious beliefs aside or, or regardless of those that that could be a real factor as to why I people guess don't people don't talk about it as much but you know we're in we're in a kind of situation which shows that you need to talk about you need to it.